Hi, this is JP from Not the Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Arkham Horror LCG campaign playthrough. And uh, this time we are continuing the Return to Pat Carcosa campaign with Patrice Hathaway. Uh, we got the necessary experience to add some cards into our deck from The Last King. So first off, let's look at what changes I made to the deck. Okay, and we are over on ArkhamDB.com and the only changes I made to the deck were to cut off the two fire axes. I think I can handle the game without those. They were just there, just in case. And uh, the two cards that shine with Patrice are the cornered. So I added two copies of cornered into my deck. So now any card becomes a plus two to any skill test I do. So. With Patrice, you never are stranded or starving for cards. So this is a really good card for Patrice, so we'll see how this works out. And that is the only change into the deck. Now I have used all of my banked experience also, so we try to get some more experience to upgrade the deck further. But that is everything, so let's hop back over to the scenario. Okay, and we have set up the scenario, so we are playing the Return to the Echoes of the Past scenario, so we have the basement locations here. Uh, then, uh, once we advance the act, we have to put one of these Keeper of the Oaths into play in a location. And uh, let's see if I remember to do that, because that is usually what I forget when playing the return to version of this. We are not placing Doom on the uh, act or the agenda during the Muta space. We are skipping that. Instead, when an um, enemy uh, would get a clue added to them, that splits to Doom side and that will advance the agenda. Um, so we try to race and get all of the clues and stop the enemies from getting any clues and stuff like that. We also interviewed Sebastian uh, at the last scenario, so we start with one clue on the entry hall, which we can investigate right away. And we need two clues per investigators to advance this scenario act. Uh, before we hop into the game, uh, we have to resolve the balance reading and also the damned weakness. So let's uh, put some tarot cards into play. And uh, first of all, let's shuffle the tarot deck. Last game we didn't hit any really bad uh, tarot cards, but let's see what is the case this time. So we just do a quick shuffle to these and start going. Okay, so the up right one is this time uh, the Emperor. During uh, the first uh, Combat test, uh, each investigator performs each round, they get plus one combat. Well, that is pretty much useless for Patrice, and the other for the balance reading is the tower. And one random basic weakness to each investigator's deck, remove them after the game ends. I'll have to do that uh, before we start our first turn. Then um, the last one is... Uh, the sun. Uh, during each investigator's first turn, they have two fewer actions to take, so we only have one action for our first turn, so that is really tough. Well, uh, this seems like a bad reading to me, but it is what it is, and we'll figure out the game as we go. So that is the tarot reading done, so we are set up and ready to begin, so let's get started. Okay, and we are nearly ready to begin. First of all, we have to add one basic weakness to our deck, so I'll just shuffle my huge pile of basic weaknesses. Um, this is only for this scenario, so we'll, we'll remove this after the game. And I will redraw any uh, multiplayer or stuff like that cards, but we'll see what we get. Okay, so I'm just picking one at random from all of these, and it is Dendomorphosis, <laughs> which is, well, not the worst for Patrice, because Patrice isn't using that 
much of her hand slots, but still annoying one. So we'll add this to Patrice's deck, and now we just have to remember to not rely on our hand slot items that much, because those could be discarded by that weakness. And we'll just give the deck a quick shuffle and draw our opening hand and start playing. Okay, so one, two, let's remove that from there. One, two, three, four, five. This is our opening hand. We get the Scrunch for Supplies, Miss Doyle, Perception, Mysterious Raven, and Spectral Razor. And we only have one action uh, during our first turn. So probably we'll just play Miss Doyle and uh, see what the game brings us next round. So uh, we have two fewer actions. Our only action is to play Miss Doyle. The Mysterious Raven would be good here, but he pretty much can try to investigate, so I'll play Miss Doyle. And uh, that is everything we can do. Uh, we go to upkeep, we discard our hand. Oh yeah, uh, before that we will do the drawing of the cat that comes with Miss Doyle. So this time we get Zeal, and Zeal help, helps us fight. Uh, well, at least that combos with the Emperor. And we shuffle these others into the deck. Okay. Then we draw our next hand of five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Nice, we got cornered, which will help us a lot. And that is our turn, so uh, we also gain one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add, a, we won't add a doom. <laughs> the encounter card for this round is: it is the Seeker of Carcosa. Spawn any empty historical location, uh, society location, aloof, post at the end of the meta space. Move one clue from the Seeker. Of Carcosa location to Seeker of Carcosa. If you cannot place one room on the Seeker of, Car of Carcosa, mm, I think we need to deal with this guy immediately. So I'll just uh, spawn it uh, to one of the locations next to me. We will uh, flip this location. Pause when an enemy spawns at this location, reveal this location. It is the uh, record office. It has one clue on it, and at the end of the middle space, that clue comes a doom and co goes over to the seeker of Carcosa. And that is the middle space done. Well, 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 well. Um, I think we will play cornered for sure. So I spend it two to play cornered as my first action. Uh, we really don't want hope. We'll just try to investigate. I am using cornered. Actually, should I play Patrice's violin first? No, because we want, don't want to rely on it. So, um, we will investigate. I will uh, commit hope with the cornered. So we get plus two, so we're four versus two. Then I will also commit unexpected courage. Six versus two. It is a tablet, and tablet is minus two. If you fail, discard a random card from your hand. We succeed and grab this clue. Uh, Last action. Uh, maybe we'll. We don't have a good way to fight that guy, so we'll move over here. And this is the meeting room. Uh, exhaust an ally asset. Discover a clue at this location. Limit once per round. Well, that helps us because we can just exhaust Miss Doyle. 
So no enemy actions. We'll go to upkeep. We discard our hand. We draw a new hand. One, two, three, four, five. We get perception, last chance, winning it, spectral razor, and nano dexterity. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a dune to the agenda. No, we don't. Uh, well, the seeker of Carcosa gets one doom. Uh, let's see, at the end of yeah, it's at the end of the middle space, so we won't advance yet. So that guy actually, we need to get some way to deal with. Well, we have the spectral razor, so we could move, move, and spectral razor that guy. Yes, we can engage it because it's aloof. So, uh, encounter card for this turn is... Uh, Madden and Delusion, Search, Revelation. If you have one or more hidden cards in your hand, take one horror. If you don't, lock door. You'll just place the lock door to a location uh, with most clues. And we don't... Well, we have one clue here, so actually it comes over here. Well, ah. fumbling around. Okay, so the clue is over here and it has the locked door. Well, first two actions move, move. Last action, we will play the spectral razor to kill off this guy. And add your willpower to the skill value of this attack immediately before attack. Okay, so we are fighting, so we have a tree because of the Emperor. Uh, we can use seal. No, we can't. Well, we are using cornered and I'm committing... Uh, we'll discard winging it. So we are fighting... Uh, 8 versus 2. And we engage that enemy. With the Spectral Razor. Tablet, we kill off this because this deals 3 damage. So lucky break there we that we draw that uh, Spectral Razor at that moment. Well, that is Patrice for you. Getting lucky or not getting lucky. And that is everything. So let's just double check. Yeah, we don't get those dooms as clues. Okay. Well, uh, no enemies will go to upkeep. We discard our hand. Draw new cards. One, two, three, four, five. Unexpected curry, six cents, mysterious raven. Look what I found and scrounge for supplies. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We won't add a doom. Then the encounter card for this round is Led Astray. Place one of your clues on a cultist enemy or place one doom on the current agenda. This effect may cause the agenda to advance. So we really don't want to place our. We can't place our clues on a cultist enemy, so we have to add a doom. Okay, uh, that is the middle space done. Mm. Oh yeah, each enemy at this location gains plus one fight and plus one evade, it didn't matter. We beat that score really efficiently. So we should go and deal with the locked door. So one, two... And we'll try to break the locked door. So we're testing uh, strength four. So we are three versus four. Five versus four. And... Uh, We'll, well, it doesn't matter. We'll just discard something for the corner. So, 7 versus 4. Trying to play, break the lock door now. Uh, minus 2, so 7 versus 
six, we managed to break it. Next turn we can get this clue. That is our turn. Really quick turns here. Uh, we discard our hand. Ready cards. Uh, we draw back up to five. One, two, three, four, five. We get test of will. Promise of power. Moonstone. Drawn to the flame and winging it. Okay. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We don't add a doom. We get an encounter card. It is another seeker of Carcosa. And any empty historical society location, aloof. Well, these are annoying. Can we do anything? That is not a treachery card. Okay, well, any empty historical site location. Let's just keep this guy near. Can't do anything about it now. So, um, we spawn it there at the end of the mythos phase. It gets a doom, but it won't advance yet because we have passed the point of checking the doom threshold. So, first off, we will exhaust uh, Mr. Doyle. As an action, we grab this clue. Oh, well, we will advance. So, uh, for each real history called site location, add one clue to it to a maximum of uh, its clue value. Now we need two more clues. Okay. And uh, one, two, we can't get that clue before that guy turns it into a doom. And, well, we are advancing next turn anyway. So, uh, second action. We'll get. Yeah, we'll gain a resource. So we can play the Moonstone. And we will, last action, winging it from our discard. Play one, yeah. So we get the minus one Shroud. We shuffle this back into our deck. We will uh, use. We'll discard the other winging it for cornered. We are testing um, four versus three and promise of power. So a lot of. So we are eight versus three and we added one curse token into the back. Eight versus three. It is a skull, and it is the highest number of doom on an enemy, so minus one. So we pass, we grab this clue. And that is our turn. No enemy actions, we discard our hand, and uh, gain a resource, and we use those resources to play the moonstone. From our discard and ready this that is our turn so that is that round let's go to the next round and of course we need to draw our hand before we start the next round one two three four five what we get is uh, gods ogre the man in the pallet mask winging it and look what I found so, the man in the pallet mask will just spawn it somewhere. We probably don't have time to go chasing after the stranger in this game. Oh yeah, and <laughs> as I said, 
I forgot about this one. So last turn we spawned this guy. Okay, so let's read. So keeper of the oath is five fight, three health, three evade, humanoid cultist. When the number of current act is greater than the number of current agenda, keeper of the oath gains hunter. Post. At the end of the enemy phase, find each investigator whose location shares the trait with Keeper of the Oath's location. Move one clue from each of those investigators to Keeper of the Oath. So we'll spawn this guy up here. It hunted once. And of course this flips. There's two clues over there. So at least we remember this guy uh, not that late in the game. So this guy will hunt here, and uh, now uh, we don't add any doom, but we have to advance. So this these dooms go away, and we advance the axe. So that guy loses hunter. So shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Nothing major happens, so skip the place one doom on the current agenda step of the middle space force. After one or more clues are placed on an enemy in play, flip those clues to their doom side. So the same as before. And uh, we'll shuffle the discard pile into the encounter deck. Then we will check for doom. Or we already did that. And we draw a mythos card or an encounter card next. It is the King's Edict. Uh, for each cultist enemy in play, move one clue from that enemy's location to that enemy until the end of the round. Each cultist enemy in play gets plus one fight for each clue and blah blah blah. So, that sucks. So, this moves turns into a doom, this moves, turns into a doom, oh yeah, and uh, this actually has flipped because we placed the stranger there, but this is not a cultist, so yeah, so that doesn't trigger, but uh, next round we are advancing the act again. And at the end of the Mythos phase, this guy gets uh, another Doom. Okay, well, let's start our turn. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I feel like I want Augur in play, rather. So, first action, we'll get a resource. Second action, we'll get... Uh, we play Augur, so Zeal goes into discard. Last action. We'll move. Actually, yeah, we'll move over here. Seems like we need to go to the basement now because that up floor is packed with enemies. Okay, that's our turn. Uh, we discard our hand. No enemy actions. We'll go to upkeep, so we draw one, two, three, four, five, and gain a resource. So we get a test of will, butter from another dimension. This comes into play, and stray cat, and we hit the signs. Okay, well, this didn't hit us bad, so that's okay. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We'll, uh, we won't add a Doom, so uh, we check for uh, Agenda Advancing, so these get removed. Actually, this guy moved before we drew that King's Edict, so we only removed the Doom from here, and that didn't get the clue removed. So we advanced uh, still. Okay, so... Spawn the Zeta said possesses old speaker enemy in the entry hall. Check the camp analog. If Sebastian Moreau is not in under VIP slain, search the collection for Sebastian Moreau. 
and uh, spawn it at the entry hall. So, okay, we are pretty much screwed. So, we don't have good ways to deal with this enemy. So, I think we will just resign. So, I won't even bother to search for the Sebastian because we are pretty much going to just resign and yeah yeah I, I think we'll just resign so we are resigning screw this we'll drop this crew over here and let's see mm. do we we, I think we don't even get any resources. I, I don't really like this scenario as true solo. You either uh, steamroll this or you get swarmed with enemies and the agenda just advances too quickly for you to have any means to stop it. But it is what it is. Uh, so, if no resolution was reached, each investigator resigned or was defeated. The you barely escape the building with your body and mind intact and lead to safety. Resolution 4. Resolution 4. Uh, in your camp log, record the followers of the sign have found the way forward. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Each investigator earns one bonus experience as he or she gains insight into the machinations of the king in yellow, so we at least got one experience. So, and uh, Sebastian Moreau is not defeated. Remove all uh, cultist tablet and elder king tokens from the chaos bag, then add one uh, of each into the bag, and then we continue to the unspeakable oath. So, well, that didn't go really well. That, that was actually a horrid <laughs> game for me. Um, we didn't take any damage or anything like that, but uh, at the fourth stage we were pretty much screwed once the possessed old speaker hit the table. We don't have any means to fight that guy, um, Sebastian Moreau. So we would have had two enemies engage with us. Uh, and we can't even damage that guy at Act 1 and Act 2. Yeah. So we could have defeated that guy some way and win the scenario, but I doubt it. So uh, that was the uh, return to the echoes of the past. A quick scenario. Next up is one of my favorite scenarios in the whole game: the return to the unspeakable oaths. And we'll see if we continue from there or end the campaign in that. Because if we get defeated or can't get out in time, I probably will scratch this campaign. But hopefully we get to advance to the later part of the campaign through that scenario. So, hope you guys like this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.